this is the Opinionated Science Educator. Welcome to my channel. This is an instructional video for Grade 7 Natural Sciences. In this video, I will be asking you questions. I will also be giving you things to do. The best way for you to learn is to be actively involved and to do things. So welcome to my Natural Sciences Lab. Here, your ideas will be challenged. Here, you will learn different aspects about natural science. So let's get started. So again, I'd like to say hello and welcome, grade nine, uh, grade sevens, into my science lab or my science classroom. So here, you will have to be engaged. You will be doing activities. And you'll be doing those activities to learn. So, grade sevens, I'd like to start off with what you already know or your prior knowledge. In grade four, you investigated how shadows can be used as a way of indicating time. So, here you can see this uh, sundial on the te on the television, and as the sun moves, you can see that shadow is moving too. So can you explain how the sundial was used to show the passing of time? Write your answer down now. Maybe your teacher also asked you to do an investigation like the one I'm about to show you. Uh, to cut out those figure men and you let him stand two hours after sunrise at midday and two hours before sunrise. Now look at the shadows. Can you explain why the length of the shadow changes? I'd like you to try and do this now, so write down your answer. I'd like to introduce you to the Science Club. They also answered my questions. So this is Tabor, and he thinks the sundial works because the shadows cast of the shadows cast as the Earth rotates counterclockwise on its axis. Suzette thinks the sundial works because of shadows cast as the sun moves across the sky. May thinks the shadows change length because of the position of the sun as it moves across the sky. And Tumi agrees with her and thinks the shadows change as the sun moves across the sky from east to west. Now Donald here says that the shadows with the sundial and the investigation happen because of the sun's apparent movement. So who do you agree with? I'd like you to uh, say who you agree with and give reasons for your answers. So now would be a good time. You can pause the video. This is a 10 minute counter, but I've sped it up so that you can um, pause the video and come back in 10 minutes and we'll continue with the lesson. Okay, so let's look at how a sundial works. It's a device that you can tell the time from, depending on where the sun casts its shadow on the sundial. Now, the sundial consists of two parts, a flat circular plate with markings on it and a stick called a gnomon. The G is silent. There's the flat circular plate. There's the gnomon. So as the sun, um, that's the, the gnomon, casts a shadow on the plate, and this is the shadow helps you to tell the time. And you have to understand how the sun casts its shadows to understand how a sundial works. So, as the earth rotates on its axis, the sun's apparent movement across the sky causes objects to cast shadows. And as the sun's position changes, it casts the shadow and this aligns with the different times around the plate and we can tell the time. The size and position of the shadow depends on the direction and position of the light source with respect to the object. Let us conduct an activity to study the direction of the shadow and the size of the shadow. For this, we need a torch and any small toy. We will keep the toy on the table vertically. When light is focused on the toy from this side, you will see that the shadow is formed on the opposite side, which is because light travels in a straight line. Now notice the shadow as the position of the torch is changed continuously. 
as the torch is revolved around the toy, you will see that the position and size of the shadow also changes, which shows that the size and shape of the shadow depends on the position and angle of the source of light. When you are out in the open under the sun for the entire day and you observe your shadow at regular intervals, you will see the difference in the size and position of the shadow which is due to the change in position of the sun relative to earth as sun moves from east to west. So grade 7, you're welcome to try that activity at home. Now I just want to go back to the shadow investigation. In the morning, the shadow is long because the sun is at a low angle in the sky. And the sun's energy is spread out over a large area of the ground. So that's why it's actually a little cooler in the morning than it is in the afternoon. Now at midday, the sun is directly above a person at midday. So it's high in the sky and the energy falling on the ground is spread out over a small area. That's why the afternoon often feels warmer. And again in the evening, the person's shadow is long because the sun is again at a low angle. Remember, it's not the sun that's moving, but it's the Earth's rotation. Now, just to correct um, some incorrect ideas, uh, the sun moves across the sky from east to west? No. The sun appears to move across the sky from east to west because of the Earth's counterclockwise rotation. It's also incorrect to say the sun comes up in the east and goes down in the west. This apparent motion is also due to the counterclockwise ro rotation of the Earth. And that's why it appears to rise above the horizon. The shadow changes as the sun moves. The length of the shadow does not change, getting shorter when the sun is more overhead. However, it's the Earth's turning that causes the apparent position of the sun to change, which is the, then results in the shadow's change in length. Now, I'd just like to share some history of science so you realize that your ideas are not strange. For many, many years, people believed that the Earth was immovable and that things like the sun and moon revolved around them. That was called the geocentric model. And many people believed it because of their religious beliefs and the fact that it was mentioned in the Bible, Joshua got the sun to stand still in Ecclesiastes. It says the sun goes back to its place uh, in Isaiah, that the shadow moved backwards. So this belief that the earth was the center and rose in the east and uh, from the east to west was longly, was held for a long time. That was called the geocentric model. We now know about the heliocentric model, which was first proposed by Nicholas Copernicus, who was a Polish astronomer um, who lived in the 1500s. Now, he first postulated that if the sun is assumed to be at rest and the earth is assumed to be in motion, then he could explain the patterns that he saw with the other planets from astronomy. Um, to accept this theory, though, he had to abandon the Aristotel Aristotelian natural philosophy idea, which was firmly held as a belief by the church. So the first descriptions of his heliocentric hypothesis were published in a book, and it wasn't even under his own name, but by a younger George Recticus, who was from Germany. And here, this was like a trial balloon because Copernicus was a postponed uh, publishing his ideas. And when Reticus left back for Germany, he took it to be printed. And the final version is contained in something called Six Books Concerning the Revolutions of Heavenly Orbs. And this was the start of a scientific revolution. So coming back to my friends from the Science Club, yes, Tabo was right. It's only the apparent movement. And uh, as Suzette says, it the sun appears to move in the sky because of the Earth's rotation, and this is why the shadows change in length. It's all based on the position of the sun and its apparent movement. So it's not actually moving, it's the Earth's rotation, and that's why we saw what we saw. So until next time, in the next Natural Science video lesson, this is the Opinionated Science Educator saying goodbye.